Welcome to Blackman Homestead. We decided to take you on a little walk today, show you a little more about us. Um, this is coming down our driveway into our property. We have an electric gate here. As we walk past this gate, um, this morning I hung some fly traps. We have a bad issue down here by the woods with yellow flies and just flies in general. These have been hanging maybe an hour or so and we're already collecting flies. Our little Elsa loves to lay by this gate and the flies love to bite her. So we're trying to eliminate some of these flies, hopefully the yellow flies, like I said. Our property, we wanted to give you a little bit of a look at. We have an acre here, it's completely fenced in with the electric gate, as I mentioned. There's our little Elsa scan in the shade. She does not like the sun. With the mail, we have a mailbox up at the main road. Our house is set back off the road. Our house is facing the woods. Our back of our house faces the main road. We like this setup. Most of our property is up behind the house toward the main road. But with the electric gate, we had to come up with a solution for package delivery. Um, we have a box here that we have set outside the gate that the delivery guys can leave our packages in to keep them out of the weather. We do have a FedEx delivery guy that is not fond of Elsa. Elsa product protects the perimeter of our yard. Um, she just naturally has done that. She does not go out the gate. If that gate is open, she will not go out that gate. Again, she's taught herself that. She knows her perimeter. She knows where she belongs, but she also doesn't like anybody in her perimeter that's not allowed or invited. We have this box here that we use for our packages uh, to keep them out of the weather. And since they can't get to our front door, they leave them there. Watch till the end. We have a couple of snaps. Uh, the delivery company sent a photo of the package delivery with Elsa standing there, which is quite comical. And then we have another picture. We inadvertently accidentally left the gate open during that delivery day. She's laying inside the gate, not going out. I think that might have tested his nerves a little extra that day because you can tell he threw the package and ran. As we walk up this way, you might take notice of all of our targets around for archery. Um, hop over and check out Jeremy's YouTube channel, Archery Universe, and he'll explain all this setup to you and give you great archery lessons and pointers. Check them out. We'll put the link below. So here we are at the tomatoes. Um, as you can see, they are thriving. The, the, the adjustments we've made on the pruning, the soil um, has done tremendous. We have tomatoes all the way around now. We are excited and this is the beginning of the fruiting. We are only looking forward to much, much more. Beautiful tomatoes have started. Our lemon tree is still doing fantastic right here. Lots of lemons, there's at least a dozen on this side. I'm gonna take a walk over here and look at the pepper plants also that we were having issues with. I don't know if I mentioned in the earlier videos, I'm pretty sure I didn't, but all of our tomato plants in this bed and all of our sweet pepper plants, we have started from seedlings over the winter. Um, it, which is another reason I am very blessed and excited about the growth that we're getting now on these plants since the issues I had in the beginning. So here we are at the beds with the pepper plants in them. As I stated, these are also started from seedlings. These are the ones that were chewed down to just the baby nubs in the first or second video that I showed you. We needed to show you this, um, the way these things are thriving now. This right here is my banana pepper plant. We got two more peppers coming on there and more to come. This is a jalapeno plant. It has not started blooming. I got to do a little research on this jalapeno plant. I'm not sure how that starts producing, but the plant itself is strong and hardy. So if you, any of y'all grow jalapeno plants, this would be a perfect time for you to comment and let me know some good tips and if I need to do something different or if this is a slow blooming plant, any advice would be greatly appreciated. So this is the other bed of sweet pepper plants. 
Um, these are a carnival blend sweet pepper. So I'm going to get a multitude of colors of plant of peppers. I'm excited to see what we we'll get. Uh, we'll show you a picture. We harvested a purplish black one, which was very interesting. Haven't tasted it yet, but I'm excited to see the different flavors. Um, we do have lots of blooms. We have lots of peppers starting on these plants now. I did weed a couple plants out, not weed, transplanted a couple plants out of here and moved up by my greenhouse to give these a little more room now that they're starting. We have peppers, 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 tomatoes. They're all thriving. I am so excited about this. Um, while we're here, I want to talk about the raised beds again. Jeremy is a great partner in all of this. He loves this as much as I do. Um, he does all the heavy lifting, the construction of the beds, the dirt movement, all that. I'm starting my seeds and getting them in the dirt. Um, so we do make a good team with that. We did get some advice to put a frame around the tops of these to help support them more, which once this growing season is finished, we're gonna make those additions and most likely add more. Um, as we're finding, we are just loving to, to grow. Um, these barrels are uh, readily available. Um, we had these given to us. We have noticed other places to get them. If you go on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, there are usually someone you can find selling them. I'll put a picture of an example. Also, if you are acquainted with or know someone acquainted with a livestock owner, um, they get protein tubs um, in and they are usually willing to get those off their hands. They might sell them to you for a few bucks, which is great. Let's take a walk up to the greenhouse and see what we got going on up there. Okay, so we're arriving at the greenhouse. This is another possession that I love. <laughs> Jeremy got this for me for Christmas and I am absolutely in love with this little greenhouse. I have started doing some new seedlings in here which we'll walk in and take a look at um, show you what I got started for hopefully the fall. I'm trying to experiment with everything find good timing for this um, Northwest Florida growing seasons that we have. I'm not familiar with them but we're getting there. These are some radishes I started. Uh, another basket of radishes. These are some more tomato plants I started. Just some marigolds to add back into some of our um, partner growing to keep bugs away. This I'm excited about. This is spaghetti squash starting. I started three, four days ago on the 21st. So let's say six days ago. They are already this big. I've been doing some research and I saw a suggestion we have the chickens, as y'all know, to start growing my seedlings in the eggshells. Um, it does two things, gives you a, a place to start the seedlings, but also as you transplant these seedlings, the shells break down and provide the plants with calcium. Um, I usually grade up some eggshells that we have and sprinkle them in the beds, but if we plant them in it, that's just a step ahead. Um, let's move out here. We have our cucumbers which are doing good. I have two cum cucumbers on that little plant there. Looking really good. I have a couple more of these mild pepper plants. This plant got a little damaged too, but it's coming back. I got two mild peppers there. We have our first watermelon, which looks so cute. We have more of the carnival blend peppers, which are starting. I'm not sure if we're going to get changed on color on these, but this plant in the middle is the one that I did get the blackish purplish looking sweet pepper off of. Our cantaloupes has blooms like crazy. We're excited to see if we can actually get any cantaloupes this season. These little guys need a little bit of water up here in the sun this morning. I haven't watered them yet this morning. Um, these are the two I transplanted out of the big bed down there. But we do have, even since I transplanted them, we have some peppers starting. Sweet potatoes. They're doing great in that tub. We had a problem with worm caterpillars. We got a suggestion from a friend, um, some caterpillar spray to put on there, which I'll show you. Okay, so this is the 
recommendation we got from a friend that is also um, growing. Caterpillar Killer Spray with BT. Uh, we will put a link down below where you can get this. Um, per instructions, we just mix it in this little spray bottle and you just mist them till they're soaked. It does say you can mist all the way up until harvesting time. It has tremendously slowed down those caterpillar eatings. We do have still a few, I think. It's time for me to shoot them up again, which I'll do this afternoon after the sun goes down. Um, but it seems to be working great. We'll put that link below. So we're gonna walk up to the top here of our acre. Um, we are planning on next year expanding. Since we've experimented, we know we're doing pretty good so far. We have more property up here we can use. Um, we are going to look at either putting in-ground beds or more raised beds up here. Our elevation with the water flow, we have to figure out something with the in-ground beds so they don't wash out, which is quite easy to do, I'm sure. Jeremy can get a handle on that. <laughs> or we do more raised beds, but we are planning on expanding next year. So make sure and keep following us because you'll see our all of our improvements and upgrades we're doing. Let's take a walk over and look at the chickens. We're just gonna take a visit. I'm not going in to collect yet. It's not time yet. They still have a couple hours of laying to do. So here we are at the coop again. As you can see, they're excited to see me. They think I have treats for them already and their afternoon um, pellets. But like I said, we're gonna give them another hour or so of peace so that they can finish laying. We wanted to show you some adjustments we made on the coop for the summertime. We cut off part of the tarp to give them better airflow. It gets quite hot up here. Um, it is 82 right now at 1130 and the humidity is high. Um, so airflow, some more light in for them. We will in the winter time put some tarp back over there to keep them warm, um, which worked out very well this past winter. And here's a look at this side of our girls. Two weekends ago, we had a tropical storm here. Um, I'm very sad to say that we lost one of our girls. I believe it was a heart attack. There was no signs of any injuries on the little girl. Um, she was my special little girl that always come up. It looks like I got a new one gonna take her place. Um, that always came up to get snacks for me and treats when I first walk up in the afternoon. Um, I found her on the floor, just gone, very sad. Um, Everyone else looks very healthy though. Since then though, I do have a broody hen. She is, we got two in there. One's ready to lay in the middle, but the one on the right, she has become broody. She wants to be a mama and she keeps stealing everybody's eggs. We'll see where that goes. I don't have a rooster, so she can't make babies, but she really wants to. Hey, so that's a quick tour of the Blackman homestead, the whole one acre of it. Hey, we appreciate you joining us today. Hey, if you don't mind, give us a subscribe down below. Click that notification bell. And if you like this kind of content, click that like button. Appreciate you joining us. God bless and shoot straight. Bye, y'all. Pretty good. You follow me everywhere, don't you? Yes, you do. You're so pretty.